Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world goodness. As you know, we are uh, on the week up to the launch of the old world, the official launch, not the pre-order, the actual, it will be on shelves to buy. People will start playing games of it and such is this Saturday coming. It's only a couple of days away. And to celebrate that this entire week, all my content is gonna be based around the old world. I'm gonna give you guys as many videos as I possibly can. And yeah, I'm excited to do that. So in today's video, I'm gonna tackle one more of the main nine factions they are bringing to us online launch that I haven't done yet. So for this one, we are going to be chasing after the orcs um, and I'm going to be doing an orc miniature. Now I have noticed that my collection is so jam packed with beautiful, collectible, rare pieces and I am sick and tired of seeing them in boxes left behind. So I've been basically just pulling out cool models that I think deserve a paint job and that I can give you in these videos. So in this particular video, I'm not gonna be painting a standard orc boy. I'm actually gonna be painting up the collector's animosity orc set from, I don't even know what year it came out, but it's basically an example of what happens when orcs fail an animosity test and they start to squabble and basically have a crazy fight. So it's two orcs having a fight, two night goblins are involved as well. One of the orcs is missing an arm, flying backwards. Now, before I do that, the caveat to this video is, this was not a brand new miniature when I got it. It had previously belonged to somebody that gave it some form of paint job and then somebody else inherited it, did some terrible things to it, trying to strip the paint off and, this video is gonna be me trying to salvage this glorious piece, uh, bring it back from the dead, if you will. I'm not really sure if I can do it. So as of this point, well, hopefully this video will be a success. It may not be, but we'll uh, we'll kind of power on and see what happens. Before I get into the video, huge thank you to all my active patrons. You guys are amazing. From the bottom of my heart, you guys are awesome. Without you guys, I would never be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in getting involved with that and supporting the channel, there are links in the description below, access to a private Discord server, and an extra video every single week are just two of the awesome benefits for you guys. So if that's something that interests you, like I said, link below. Let's get into uh, trying to fix up this model. Wish me luck. So this is the absolute state in which the uh, miniature started in. Uh, I believe someone did leave it in a in a cup filled with stripping agent and obviously the, all the stripping agent evaporated and all the gunk that was left on it was left in that cup for I think years to be honest with you. So this is unfortunately the state that I got my hands on it. Now I do have this particular piece from another one that was never sprayed or anything. I have no other parts of the second one. So I can give you an example of what this part should look like when I'm beginning as opposed to what it currently looks like. And the difference is quite staggering. So this is one brand new component and this is what it should look like. It is going to take quite a lot of work to get it back to that kind of pristine silver. And I don't even know if I can get it back to pristine silver. The, the metallic look underneath it, it makes it look like it's been turned into lead or something. It was never cast in lead. It's just, it's been so damaged by those chemicals. And I did uh, unfortunately discover some uh, nasty side effects later on. So the first thing I did was I got some isopropyl alcohol and I dumped the components in there and I left them to soak for a couple of hours to see if that would uh, shift the paint. Now, usually this does the trick. It's, it's a little bit softer than other things. It's typically what I use to clean resin off of prints. And yeah, usually a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol will remove paint. Then I'll have to go in with like some pins or an old needle or something and go in and get rid of any bits that are left in like nooks and crannies. But that did not happen with this piece. I scrubbed this guy for quite a long time and there was still a lot of material, old paint, old, I don't even know if it was old. I don't know what it was. I think the old, whatever agent was used to try and strip it last time had kind of congealed and solidified onto the, the skin of the model. And it was an absolute nightmare. So I quickly gave up on the isopropyl alcohol or the methylated spirit, sorry. That's what this is, methylated spirits, not isopropyl alcohol, apologies. Uh, the methylated spirits and I moved over to a different product. So from there, I jumped onto the BioStrip 20, the all-purpose stripper that a lot of people rave about online. I have done a little video on it before. What I will say from using it in this particular experience is I don't care what result this gives you. This product could literally be the best thing ever at taking paint off of miniature. It could do it the quickest, and it could do it with the least amount of damage in the models, and I would still never use it again. It is just the most awkward, horrible substance to work with. It's like waterproof, and it doesn't like stick into things, and it's it's just it's horrible. Even when you get the model and you're scrubbing away, you can't see the paint underneath it or what's coming off. 
you rinse it under a tap and the, the, it doesn't move because it's all waterproof and gunky. This did do the job, it removed a good portion of the paint and I was happy enough with that but after I finished using it this particular time I closed up this tub and I'm fairly sure that I'm never going to try and use this stuff again, it was just awful. I think I'm going to go back and get myself another bottle of the Green Stuff World Paint Stripper because that stuff is magic. I used the crap out of that bottle and I, I definitely want to get some more of that. I wish it came in a better tub, something like this that I could drop models in and out of instead of having to pour it out of the bottle into something and then it kind of gets wasted from there. But yeah, once again, I used the Biostrip 20. I left it in there for about 20 minutes, half an hour and then I came in with my toothbrush once again and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. Like this was going so poorly that this was kind of the point where I was thinking, is this the right miniature to use? Is this going to work as a video? Is this a kind of a... I don't know, a waste of time because after I got the most of the paint off I did realize that whatever chemical had been used previously had indeed eaten into the metal in some areas and there's these horrible pitted parts some of the detail in the face and stuff was definitely worn away that was softer and just more rounded and but I wanted to use all the original parts even though I had that one pristine torso I didn't want to mix that in with the older parts I just wanted to try and replace and repair this entire thing from start to finish and make it become something that I'm quite proud of and something that will sit in my collection for a long time. With that in mind, I did decide to power through and see if I could do that. So I got the new size base, which is a, a 60 by 30 millimeter base, basically the new cavalry size, but obviously it will replace two 30 by 30 bases in an orc unit and be used as a unit filler. Unfortunately, there is no animosity anymore with orcs, which is probably a good thing for most orc players. I found it as a very characterful thing in the game. But obviously this model doesn't represent animosity anymore. So I will just be used as a unit filler in like a second or third rank two orcs. I've had a bit of a fight and decided to have a fist of cuffs for it. Here I'm using one of my uh, little tricks that I haven't seen anyone else actually ever use. Which is what I do is I pour a little bit of resin from one of my 3D printers uh, onto you know, any old palette or a bit of cardboard or whatever. And then I use a pin to paint it into any gaps or recesses and then just use the Green Silver World UV torch to cure it. It's unbelievable for filling in gaps and making uh, joints really strong and making these like completely smooth transfers. So even when I put the head on, I'm going to go under the neck and smooth all that in. And basically, you can, because it does not cure through time, you can use that pin to manipulate that stuff as much as you want, as much as you need. And then two, two, three seconds under the UV torch and it's rock solid. So I think this is a great little tool. As you can see, his wrist joint is uh, not the best there. So I'm going to use a bit of UV resin. Feed it around the joint, UV torch, Bob's your uncle, solid. So I did this for any of the joints that were kind of gapped or anything that didn't connect just right. I even used it on the base to make sure it was a solid coat. And this was the result of it all stuck together. And as you can see, it still looks really rough. But thankfully, once you introduce some sprays, it does tidy up the model an awful lot. And it starts to look like something that's you know, worth my time and worth my effort. It did make some of the pitting show up a lot more, but I hopefully I can hide that with some paint, which is what I'm gonna do now. Because I spent so much time uh, trying to repair this miniature and get it to this kind of state, which obviously took a long time in this video. This is a video is about twice as long as a normal video. I am gonna kind of speed through the painting side of things. I'm still gonna cover every single step. I'm just not going to, to bore you guys with, with too much painting of each particular stage, if that makes sense. So. The model was sprayed Chaos Black and then it was given an, like a heavy zenithal of Grey Seer. And then after that we moved over to Orc Flesh Contrast and painted in all of the Orc Flesh, funnily enough, on this miniature. And the first stroke I did I got wrong because that right hand is actually fingerless gloves. So I don't know whether that's to do with my bad eyesight, old soft metal miniatures or the fact that it was damaged that I couldn't see the fingerless gloves. But I had a, an image pulled up from uh, Google Images of what the model is supposed to look like. So I did actually go back and correct that. And obviously take my time and be a little bit more careful moving forward with where the green paint is supposed to go. Where all paints are supposed to go, to be honest with you. So I got out, like I said, uh, the orc flesh contrast over the entire thing. After this, I decided to try to figure out kind of what colors I was going to use for the cloth. So obviously I have a huge night goblin army already, so I'm going to follow through and do the same cloth on the uh, night goblin. So they basically fit into that force. I use Volop as pink for the insides of the mouths just while we're here. I need that pinky flesh when they've got their mouths open screaming. I just like to fill that in with Volop as pink. Yeah, so my Night Goblin robes are the cowls are red and then all the cloth underneath it, the 
the robes are grey. So I started by kind of following up with that across the two night goblins that are in this little uh, vignette diorama thing. And then I quickly realized that these orcs are probably fighting in the same clan or in the same army as these night goblins. Therefore, they're probably going to share similar tones, similar colors. In the end, I did decide to do all of their uh, like t-shirts in red and then their trousers in gray, just so they all kind of match it together and look like a unified force. It's definitely a color scheme that I could drag forward into an entire orc army. And then obviously it will blend in with my goblin army and I can use it as one large force. Uh, something I look forward to is playing some orcs and goblins in the old world. As you can see, I'm taking my time. Fine point of bridge. I don't want to hit any of that green with any of that bright red. This model is also all metal, apart from the base, obviously, and it's very top heavy. So I, when I'm holding it, I'm trying it for it not to like flip around or drop it and damage it or chip paint or make it break apart. That would be a kind of a disaster. So I got to this point where I did the two red hoods on the goblins, and then I was moving across to the gray for the robes. And it was only kind of halfway through the gray on the robes that I realized that I should be doing the same colors on the orc. So you'll see me transition here from the gray on the robes to the gray on their trousers. And then we'll jump straight into the red on their t-shirts and then go from there. The plastic orcs and goblins sculpts are sometimes hit and miss. Sometimes they're amazing and sometimes they're a little bit odd. I would much prefer have as many of the old metal sculpts as I could possibly get. Like if I could get my hands on a squad of 20 old metal arrow boys for orcs, that would make me so happy. They're so much nicer than the plastic orc arrow boys. And that's such a shame, but it is the truth of the matter. So hopefully when they do those kind of like made to orders or whatever, or bring back old metal units, perhaps they'll give us the opportunity to buy those sculpts. Cause I, I might buy 40 of them actually, maybe, but I don't know. I get carried away with these old roller arms. I want them all to be huge. I want to have every model that ever came out for the army all painted up and added in and it's a, it's a problem. It's a real collector's problem. But uh, the article the other day which reintroduced that new Bretonian character that they were going to use as a games day model. I know some people don't like the sculpt. I love the sculpt. And it makes me very happy the idea that they are going through some of the old molds that were never released and getting them kind of pressed and printed and adding them to for sale. I think it's just so cool. How many other awesome miniatures that we seen online as unreleased this and unreleased that are finally going to see the light of day. So the grey and red is definitely working for me. I like those spots of colour. I'm going to follow through. I'm going to use some Agros Dunes. And this is just for the apron on the guy that unfortunately got knocked out and is flying backwards. He is wearing kind of this apron thing. So I'm going to go for Agros Dunes on them. And then he's got a couple of like, I don't know, ropes or straps and stuff protecting his ankles. And I'm going to do those in that colour as well. Once again, super quick step, no real thought going into it, just what colour will an apron be? A dirty kind of cream colour makes the most sense for this guy. Maybe he likes to consider himself the unit's personal cook, and this orc didn't like what he cooked that morning. His squig burger wasn't quite up to code, and he's letting him know that he is displeased, and he is uh, issuing him with a formal complaint in the form of a knuckle sandwich. He's also missing his arm, as you can see, it got, I don't know, chopped off ripped off and the goblin on the ground with his fists up is actually standing on the arm to make himself a little taller so that piece is not missing it is there gargax here was then brought in for all the brown parts so obviously there's lots of the fingerless gloves the wraps the the kind of wrist protectors belts any of those bits and pieces that you can find i'm gonna hit with the gargax here as a nice kind of deep rich brown color As you can see, he's really starting to come together. Going to throw some metallics on now with some lead belcher. Obviously, one guy has an entire kind of chain, chain mail. It's not chain mail, like plate mail. Uh, armor piece going down his chest. They both have big armored shoulders. And there's a few other chains and gubbins. No weapons near them. So I don't know where these guys have uh, lost their choppers. Obviously, the guy on the right has picked up a night goblin to use as a weapon. And the other guy lost his arm. I presume that was to a chopper at some stage. So maybe I should leave some broken weapons around on the base. Add those in later on, I think it would be kind of cool. Agrox Red Shade was then introduced to shade the entire thing down. Every single place, other than the skin, all the armor, all the cloth, everything is going to get a nice coat of uh, Agrox Red Shade, which will darken it down, add some nice shading into the recesses, and also act as a little bit of a kind of a varnish coat. It won't actually make it shiny or anything, but it protects the metal miniature from chipping or anything like that. I got the base painted while I was waiting for that shade to dry. 
and this is where we're currently at. Model is still looking quite rough. But now it's time for the magic where we do take our time. We start to layer in all the details and cover up as much of the problems as possible. So we started with that war boss green. As you can see, I'm going to painstakingly and carefully go in and layer up all the orc muscles on this piece. And I say painstakingly, but for me, and I don't know why, I really enjoy painting orc skin. So this is actually a treat for me. I did actually layer it up two or three coats, different tones and stuff, just to see what it would look like. And I was pretty happy with the result. So you can see going in, following all those natural lines that are in the model, they would be, I think, more predominant on a sculpt that wasn't half melted from some sort of crazy acid. Therefore, painting in those lines again, like I said, takes some time, but it's totally worth it. From here, we are going to jump up to an even brighter green. Like I said, War Boss Green is the color of choice for the second layer of highlight, Warp Stone Glow. War Boss Green, and then we are going to go a slight um, paler shade again at the end, or layer at the end, just for the very tips and stuff like this. So, as you see, I'm following those uh, muscles around, all the tops of them, anywhere a light's going to bounce. I still want to keep it quite dark and grungy in the recesses, but I want to make it quite poppy and bright on the top. I mean, this is a fantasy orc. This is an old world Warhammer orc. He should be a lot brighter than like a 40k orc, in my guess, in my estimation. It's up to me as to whether you agree with me or not. But uh, I think it does make all the difference. Especially a special piece like this, a collector's piece. If they don't go for crazy money online on eBay, you can get them for kind of 50, 60 euro, which I know is crazy for a little diorama piece. But uh, there's other ones out there that go for a lot more. So I was kind of surprised that you could get this guy for that much. Scarcity Green was then the final highlight color that I used for the skin. And as you can see, I'm being very sparing with this, only going for the very, very tippity top parts of all the muscles. And then when I go into all the sharp details on the face, it's just very small, like touch highlights across the kind of chins and lips and stuff like that. Just to make that skin pop a little bit more, make it feel a little bit more natural. So this was, I, I think, officially past the ugly stage for me. Like when I'd gotten all the skin done, I felt like, okay, I think this is going to finish off as something that I'm going to be quite proud of. So I can't wait to power through and see what it's going to look like in the end. The next coat I grabbed was Mephist on Red. I used the air paint version because it's just basically pretty thin. It's still a strong enough tone that it layers up beautifully. It comes in a big pot and it's easy to use. But if you've got a normal pot of Mephist on Red, that's, that's just fine. It makes no difference really. And then obviously I layered up the hoods and t-shirts of these particular models with that. A pop of color really did help uh, the, the, the kind of tone of the piece. I was quite happy with that. We're going to come in now with uh, Mephiston, or sorry, Mechanicus Standard Grey. And we're going to use this to layer up all the brown press. Now, like obviously I put like three or four layers on the skin. I'm only going for one layer of highlight for every other part on this piece. So whether it be the gray or the red, teeth, eyes, anything like that, we're not going to go crazy. And with the gray, I think if you go sparingly, make sure you leave those dark recesses in places. I think it will give you quite a nice result. And we'll add that kind of definition back in. Some of the definition that maybe would have lost in other people's previous attempts at getting this model painted. From here, we're going to go into Zandri Dust. And Zandri Dust is going to be the layer color that I use for the apron. And then I'm also going to take this opportunity to paint the first coat on all of the teeth with Zandri Dust. I think a beigey kind of uh, apron tone uh, it works better than anything brighter than that. I don't exactly know where this orc got an apron from, but uh, it was not the old apron store, if you know what I'm saying. From here, it's over to Katachan Flesh, which is one of my new favorite uh, browns to highlight when you want still want dark but rich leather. And you've started with quite a dark contrast, whether it be Wildwood or Gargaxu or anything like that. Katachan Flesh is definitely one of those tones that I think get overlooked by a lot of people. They were they work a treat for this. And obviously highlighting the fingerless gloves, making sure I get that right. As opposed to the green, giant green hands that I have them previously done on these models. Obviously, I'm doing an example of painting an orc miniature. I only ever intend to paint one. So the fact that I picked a model that is four models probably wasn't the smartest. It definitely did slow down this day for me, but what are you going to do? 
Iron Breaker was brought in and of course used to highlight all of the metallics. And once again, like everything else, it's just going to be very touch highlights in the very bottoms of all of those panels and then kind of lightly across all of the big shoulder panels. I want the armor to go be a little bit brighter than normal, but I definitely want it to have some serious contrast between like kind of deep um, crevices where all the shade and stuff is dried and any of the higher points. Ushapti bone was then brought in and that was just used to add the final highlight onto the teeth. And as you can see, I'm not putting loads on. It's basically like halfway down the tooth, down to the tip of the tooth. And the rest, you can leave that kind of Zandri dust. It's going to make the model pop as well. At some stage, I believe when I was using the Mephiston Red, I did also block in all of their eyes with Mephiston Red. As orcs are always described as having beady little red eyes. And I think that finished it off nicely. Super happy with the result. The only thing I was missing is I could not find my Blood for the Blood God, which I would of course have put on the decapitated arm section. I really have to go rooting around and find my pot of that. And so that would have gone, of course, all on him. It would have splattered up his apron. And then, of course, the severed arm on the ground would have gotten the, the blood for the blood god treatment as well to finish it off. Got a couple of still images here just to give you guys an example of what it might look like on a table or in a unit. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of different orc video, like eBay rescue style. It literally nearly didn't happen because I was so distraught trying to take the old paint off. So I am glad I powered through. Let me know in the comments if you guys are glad that I powered through and got this piece finished as well. Okay guys, I think I actually managed to pull it off uh, just about. This was obviously a fairly poor condition model and I did my very best to repair some of the damage. A lot of the harsh detail has basically been worn away by whatever acidic thing someone previously used to try and strip the paint off it. So I had to paint in some detail. But having said that, I am still happy with the result. I'm happy to have this miniature painted in my collection and ready to rock and roll. Now there's two days left in this week, Thursday and Friday, and those two days I'm painting up very, something very special to share with you guys on Saturday. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. It's going to be one of the rarest old world things that could possibly exist and i do hope they give me rules for it so yeah uh thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure you give the video a like ask me any question you want in the comments below i will go back to each and every one of you guys and in case you're wondering i am doing a titan giveaway on the channel for 2024 so at the end of this year i'm going to be giving away a titan depending on how many subscribers i get if i get up to the glorious 100,000 subscriber mark i'll be giving away a warlord so if that's something you're interested in make sure you do hit that subscribe button okay thank you so much for sticking around at the end i'll see you in the next one